Hello, my name is Gabe, and today I've come up with a bit of a question. How should we put... no, I'm not sure how to phrase this, but I want to know if we should use references as a means of expression in our stories. Which is a weird concept, I know. So... So I guess, I guess I will tell you what brought this video on so that some understanding may exist, maybe. So I was reading, as I often do, <laughs> and as I was reading, a part of the book started talking about how the main, how a character in the book used several songs to define their life. And whilst there is a bit of an explanation, I couldn't help but feel well, bored and unsatisfied with that section of the book. And it took a bit of thought, but the reason occurred to me. It's because I've never heard of these songs. Plain and simple. They were trying to ex the book was trying to express something in a song I've it was trying to express something using media I've never heard of. So naturally, the expression fall, fell completely flat on me. I didn't get it. So, and I was wondering, and, and it led to the question that I am posing today. Should we use them in this matter at all? Or should we not? Now, before I get into what this video is asking, I want to get into the two things it's not asking. No, this is not about the use of references at all. References and Easter eggs have their place in media. They always will, as far as I'm concerned. And that is not what I want to know. Nor is this about the MCU way of doing things where you have to watch a whole mess of movies to build up to the final one, or, you know, all of them. That is a discussion worth having, make no mistake. But it is not this discussion. Okay, so what about the question that is being asked? So the important qualifier here is that the reference is in of itself being used to convey something. So. For example, instead of saying, instead of going in a long diatribe of, oh, I had the perfect family life, or I had the worst family life, I say, my family life was like The Simpsons, as an extreme example. In fact, I'll use The Simpsons as my baseline example for this entire thought process. So, I say, oh, that my family was like The Simpsons. Now, I am sure for most anyone watching, one thought conveys that they think of The Simpsons, and they generally get how that family is. But you see, that is where this gets complicated. Ultimately, by using this method and by making that reference, I am alienating the potentially low percentage of people who've never heard of The Simpsons. Yes, I know that in this case, not hearing about The Simpsons is extremely unlikely, but that's my po but it is an extreme example to get the point on. So they've never heard of The Simpsons. And so when I say that, they take no meaning from it. And this is where we get to the thing that happened to me. The author, so it seemed the author assumed everyone would know what those songs are or at the very least have them as a baseline, or at the very least everyone who would bother to read their book or consume their story. But that's a fallacy. It is a huge fallacy to assume everyone who would be interested in what you have would have the exact same interests as you. And that's what this whole thing boils down to. Interests. Yeah. I assume everyone's heard of The Simpsons, That's, and because as far as I know, it's a huge thing in popular zeitgeist. But, 
there are two things to note. Just because most people have doesn't mean everyone. There are a few people in the world who manage to completely avoid it. And two, this is also the making the assumption that for as long as my medium will be wanted to be read or consumed, that same media will ha retain its popular zeitgeist. Just imagine if Shakespeare put a bunch of contemporary references into his work. It would ruin it, because none of it would have survived today. In fact, maybe he has, just hard to find out. My point being that doing this eternally ages your work and basically will lock behind some comprehension to to the generation of which the media being referenced is from, or the events, or whatever. So, so I guess you can tell now that I think it's a bad thing. You should not use references to convey, because using references to convey means that understanding will go away. But how do you solve the problem? How do you explain something that you could explain without putting too much exposition in? Now that's the tricky part, isn't it? I think the answer is find the core absence. Note, here is something to think about. While, if I said, if I said, my fam, my life is like The Simpsons. Well, so that would convey something. What if I said instead, my life is like an animated sitcom? Or something more, more, less specific. Ultimately, by being less specific, you convey more. Which I know sounds weird. Why do you want to convey two more? Because even if you don't know what the Simpsons are, you probably have a general idea of what something like South Park or Family Guy or any of those other numerous animated sitcoms out in the world are. Or, in the case of music, which is the example that was in the book I read, you'd probably be able, if you say this was like a, a blues or loved or jazz or whatever else, you can probably convey the ideas even without saying the specific songs. Now, so yeah, so in basic summary I guess to the core idea of this video, that was a little disjointed if I'm being honest, the point in all of this is do not alienate your audience. It's not hard to do it. Make sure that anything you express is something your audience is automatically going to understand. Because, well, you want your thing to be consumed by... Rather, you do not want your tastes to be a gatekeeping to your media. At least, I don't think you should. Anyways, this was a bit of a tangent. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more like it, do subscribe. But more importantly than anything else, have a good night.